Next time we're talk about the first application of exponential functions, and that's for compound interest. All right, so compound interest, there's a little formula for it. All right, so suppose the principal of P dollars is, is invested at an annual interest rate R, compounded n times per year. Then the amount A accumulated after t years is given by this nice looking formula down here. Now let's make sure we all understand what everything means. So for like a savings account, you'd put a certain amount of money in the savings account. That'd be the principal P dollars. Or if you're taking out a loan, it'd be how much you, you're borrowing, or, or the cre credit card situation is the same way. All right, so interest rate is whatever the annual interest rate is. Uh, then compounded n times per year, so the number of compounding. So what compounding means is that we stop, calculate the interest, and add it to the account. So for like savings accounts, it's typically at the end of the month, they, they calculate the interest based on an average daily um, balance, and then add that interest to your account. And then they do it again the next month. Okay, so it's just it's once a month. Okay, so compounded n times per year. Uh, then the amount A is just how much there would be in the account there when you're all done. All right. Now there's one other type of um, of interest, uh, and it's called continuous compound interest. Now, continuous compound interest means that you're you're compounding continuously. The interest is being compounded and added into your account continuously. Now, in reality. That doesn't happen. If you do happen to find a bank that does continuously compound your interest, please let me know so I can put my money there. Now, th why are we talking about it then if this doesn't really exist? Well, that's because this compounded continuously idea, which leads us to this formula down here, A equals P times E to the RT, um, this idea here is used with other types of applications. Say like growth and decay, which would be you know, like population growth, um, radioactive decay, um, you know, things like that, where um, it's, it's essentially it's the same formula, and so we're just going to start talking about it now, just so we can make sure we know how to use it. All right, so one other thing to talk about here with our compounded continuously formula is this E. Does everybody remember what E is? All right, so E is about equal to 2.71 three. It actually the decimal representation goes on forever, just just like the number pi. And because this number occurs so much, it gets its own little name called E. Just like pi occurred so frequently, it got its own name pi. Okay. So E is this number two point seven one eight three. If you were use your calculator to E to the first power, it's gonna spit out two point seven one eight three, blah 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 blah. Right? Okay, so now let's use it. All right, so suppose we have $1,500 invested in an account uh, that earns 6.5% annual interest and it's compounded monthly. How much is in the account after 10 years? All right, so since it's compounded monthly and not continuously, then we use the A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. Okay, you only use the continuously compounding one if you're continuously compounding, which as I said a minute ago, uh, we don't really do with money. Okay. But we're going to do an example like that in just a second anyway. All right, so now we plug everything in. All right, so we're looking for A. So A equals P is $1,500. That's how much we're investing. 1 plus, all right, R, the interest rate is 6.5%. So don't forget, in order to uh, to, to use the 6.5%, we have to change that to a decimal number. So 6.5% changes to 0. 0.0. 65 is a decimal number, all divided by uh, the number of compoundings per year. So here it's compounded monthly, so n would be 12. All right, if it was compounded quarterly, then n would be 4, for 4 times a year. Uh, if it was compounded daily, then n would be 365, because we're not going to worry about leap year. All right, so that's the idea. All right, so then we've got 12 for the number of compoundings per year, and then times t. We're putting it in the account for 10 years. All right. So if you get everything plugged into the formula, uh, and I would encourage you to write this down on your paper so anybody that looks at it knows that you know where everything's supposed to go, then use your calculator and come up with the uh, with the value, which is 2,868 dollars point 28 28 cents.
Okay. If you don't get that number, you need to try again and make sure you get everything entered in correctly in your calculator. So if we put in $1,500 into an account that earns 6.5% annual interest compounded monthly, then after 10 years it would be $2,868.28. Alright, so now what about compounded continuously? Alright, so now we're using the A equals P times E to the RT formula for the continuous compounding. Alright, so A equals 1500 times E uh, to the R, which would be 0 0.065 times T, which is 10. Okay? If you have a scientific calculator, then you have an E button on your calculator. Right? So make sure you use your calculator correctly. And this time you should get the number 2800 $73.31. So a little bit more than we would have uh, if we would have just compounded monthly. Alright, so uh, that's the idea on compounded monthly, compounded continuously. A little formula here for compound interest and the uh, one for continuously compounding interest. Uh, with the E involved. And again, the continuously compounding interest formula looks exactly like the radioactive decay uh, population growth formulas that we're going to see coming up uh, pretty soon. Uh, Alright, so that's it for now. Study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.